Welcome to i webinar on Organizational Resilience Certification. Sorry about that, I was having trouble getting my um, slides to move. My name is Linda Nelson, I'm the i president, and my responsibility primarily with i is to manage its education and credentialing program. And we've had several changes come upon us um, during 2016 that we're implementing in 2017 that have, imp that have um, also impacted our credentialing program. And so because of that, we wanted to do a webinar that would help you to understand some of those changes and how they might impact your professional development. Today's objectives are to learn about i unique certification program, to understand how to leverage your current discipline-specific credentials to earn an i certification, and also review the different routes to obtain certification. There is a questions button that you can use if you have questions because you are muted during the webinar, sorry about that, um, but you can use the questions button and um, I will either get to the questions at the end of the webinar or I will respond to each question individually. So with the launch of ISO 22316, which is the only and new, and new um, guidance document on organizational resilience, which was just published in April of this year, i had to take a look at its organizational resilience framework, which we developed in 2010, and we had originally 10 risk, what we called risk-based disciplines. With the launch of ISO 22316 and the new guidance that's provided on organizational resilience, that's been globally accepted. I believe there was 32 countries that provided input onto that standard. We came up with um, really 12 disciplines, and so that has impacted our organizational resilience framework. We um, actually took business continuity, left that alone, and by the way, these are just in order, alphabetical order. They are not in order of importance. So business continuity we combined with what we were then calling emergency management, and it's now called um, continuity of operations. Our crisis management communications was left as is. Our facility management we changed and moved in, a, in and divided that up in a bunch of different places as well as our um, what we call technical infrastructure. So we took anything that had to do with critical environments meaning um, working in a data center, hospital center, anything where you have equipment that in a facility that needs to be operational 24 by 7 by 365 and put that under critical environments. Um, I'm going to skip financial health for a second. We took our social resilience and changed that to human resource management. It's really the same content. Just uh, people kept wondering what we meant by social resilience, so we thought we would go with human resource. We took part of the technical infrastructure and, and renamed it I, ICT continuity or information communication technology continuity. This would be my replace what you might call um, ITDR or disaster recovery. We were really trying to push the forward thinking of it's not just IT but it's also communications and networking and we're talking about continuity not just recovering when something breaks. We took parts of what was in emergency management and pulled that under incident response. We, um, we opened or started a new discipline on information security. It had been inferred that that was under our critical infrastructure, um, but globally really information security is its own discipline and so we need to treat it as such. Legal audit and compliance remained the same, organizational behavior remained the same, risk management remained the same, and supply chain resilience remained the same. The other one we added, as I mentioned, was financial health and viability. When you look at what makes an organization resilient, it can't just be about managing risk. It also has to do with how your organization operates, what's your leadership team like, which we talk about under organizational behavior, how do you manage strategy, what's the culture of your organization. But it's also about can, does your organization provide goods and services that people want? Are you functioning in a, in a, in a way that um, makes your organization or allows your organization to make money. So if your organization is not financially viable, if it's not financially healthy, if it doesn't have enough money in the bank, so to speak, to manage through an incident or an event, then 
it doesn't really matter what other, what other risk-based disciplines you have in place, your, your organization is not going to be resilient. So this directly impacts our certification program. So what we ended up doing was reorganizing um, from having those 10 disciplines that are part of making up your, um, I would say, choices and disciplines to earn your certification in, as well as what is inside of those disciplines. So let's take a look. I wanted to just start with a kind of a humorous picture and a short video. Organizational Resilience Certification was really launched by ICOR in 2008. And it was something that people didn't have a clear understanding of. They didn't really understand its purpose. And it's really coming into its own, I would say, 2016, 2017. Its purpose is to, creden is to credential senior and top level management um, to, to be competent to manage risk throughout the organization in a non-siloed and efficient manner. So here you've got your silos with your people managing risk kind of running throughout, back and forth throughout there. And it's important that anybody who holds an organizational resilience certification also has an understanding of those individual disciplines and the ability to manage those experts within each discipline because that is a, it's a really important aspect of this program. So let's watch a quick video to, that will um, demonstrate some of this for us. Or maybe not. What did, I had it open. We will just keep going ahead. So sorry about that. I was not able to hyperlink it, and I had it running, but it's hiding them somewhere there, and I don't want to dig through. So we're going to start with next with the poll. What I want you to do, just so I have an understanding of who's here in the audience, um, identify which risk-based disciplines do you currently hold a certification or do you have competencies. So you don't have to formally have a certification, but just identify, if you would, which um, disciplines. And notice we said which disciplines, so you don't have to choose just one. You can choose as many as um, you support. So we'll give you a, maybe a minute to vote. All right, I'm going to close the poll and you can see the results. It looks like we have about 83% of the people on the call today are um, involved with business continuity and continuity of operations. 67% um, are related with your critical environments or ICT continuity, anything to do with the IT side of it, information security, and then 50% on the crisis management communications. I find it interesting that there's nobody here representing either finance, HR, legal audit, or compliance. So that is, that is an interesting um, piece. I'm, so let me just share that with you, sorry. So now you can see the results as well. So I am going to close the poll and we'll go ahead and continue. So that helps me to understand where you are all coming from as well. So the i certification program, remember it's tied to those disciplines. So in the past we actually had, we had um, one other level, and it was an associate level. We have, and we had actually two other levels, we had a specialist level and an associate level, and we dropped those two levels this year um, for several reasons. One, we believe that um, at the associate level, um, the direction for that was really to bring people in new to the industry and people that were looking at coming in fresh, maybe right out of school. And then the specialist level has really been replaced by our discipline-specific certifications as well as um, the recognition of certifications by other organizations in different industries that are discipline-specific. So we wanted to focus on people who had expertise and competence in two or more of those disciplines. So the manager, the CORM, is focused on having expertise and experience in two to three disciplines 
we would like you to have a, some kind of formal education. So we say bachelor's degree or equivalent. And it could be that maybe you were in the military or um, you've done other things. When we're looking at CEUs, this we're looking at every three years. So when you make an application, you would be sharing the number of CEUs or, or credit hours that you would accomplish that you have um, attended over the last three years. 50 hours sounds like a lot, but if you attend, remember this is 36 months, so that's literally an hour, just a little bit over an hour a month. So if you go to any sort of um, conference or an event, you know, every hour you're there counts for CEUs. And then one of the other requirements that we have with our certification, because remember that we're trying to grow leaders, is we want you to have the ability to write and to speak publicly. So we all, in the past, with our former program, those were two separate requirements. And we did some research and we talked to some of our people and found that it would be easier. People that didn't necessarily do both um, writing and speaking. So we're looking here and, you know, do you blog? Do you run workshops? Do you do, you do any sort of education at, at the manager level? At the professional level, we're looking for discipline and experience with four to five disciplines. And then we're looking at 70 hours of CEUs over those three years and that you would have published um, in a major periodical or spoken at a conference. At the executive level, which I believe is really a pretty serious commitment to a certification, at the executive level we're looking for someone with a master's degree or at a minimum um, continuing education after your bachelor's degree. So I can state, you know, I got my bachelor's degree, I'll just say in the 80s, and in my field of study where I got my degree there's been a lot of changes since then. So we also believe that while your degree is important, it's important that you do continuing education. So this has been up to 100 hours and it's six disciplines or more. So when we get talking about this, this is seriously an executive level of certification and it is something that we find we want to be rigorous. It should not be easy to obtain because being an executive is a highly influential um, part of the organization and we want to make sure that the people that we are certifying are truly competent to do so. So here is where we're looking at either publishing a book or being a recognized speaker on organizational resilience topics. So what is the value of i certification? We really recognize the unique capabilities of those who lead in increasing the resilience of their organization. i certification program credentials personnel who understand at least two and hopefully more of the disciplines that build a more resilient organization. An i certification program provides a formal route to achieve international recognition and status through the accreditation of your competence in the organizational resilience disciplines by a recognized professional organization. So who should apply? Really those with responsibilities in two or more of the disciplines. That would be the key thing. If, you, if you're a specialist and you're trying to grow professionally, then we would encourage you to look at one of the other disciplines outside of where you currently um, hold competence. We're really looking at certifying people with two, that are competent in two or more of those disciplines. We're also looking to certify people who are looking to become leaders. People want to, who want to increase the resilience of their organizations and effectively manage risk throughout those organizations. And of course, consultants um, are people who should hold um, credentials because they are oftentimes hired to come in and help you effectively manage risk and support good business practice. So one of the ways we help you meet requirements by individual discipline is that we recognize credentialing organizations and their certifications, and I'm going to talk quite a bit about that today. You can also demonstrate competence by passing a discipline-based certification exam offered by i -Corps. So in many of the um, disciplines, we have a certification exam, but not all of them. We also want you to demonstrate leadership capabilities by writing and speaking and or teaching. And we want you to demonstrate a commitment to continual learning. One of the key findings with the people that help lead resilient organizations is that they are continual learners, they're lifelong learners, and they work for companies that support um, lifelong learning and support the continual education of their people. 
So I'm just going to start this in alphabetical order in the order of the disciplines. So in the discipline of business continuity and continuity of operations, there's, there are two ways you can fulfill this um, requirement. Via i -Corps, you can earn the ISO 22301 Lead Implementer, or you can earn the ISO 22301 Lead Auditor um, credential. The, the Lead Implementer certification you can earn by a couple of different ways. If you feel that you're competent already and you've been doing this for a while, you can just challenge the exam, or you can take either the Live Instructor Lead or Blended Learning or our e-learning our e self-study, and the exam comes with it. The um, lead auditor exam, um, you can also challenge independently, or you can, t again, take the class. Either That one is not offered as a self-study e-learning, but it is offered as a blended learning as well as instructor-led. Let's say, you know what, I've been a business continuity professional for a really long time, or I've been working with FEMA. I'm an emergency, I'm an emergency management, so you can also um, Earn the earn the credit. I'll call. I'm going to refer to these disciplines as earning credit in the discipline or meeting the requirements of a discipline. You can do that via BCI, BRCCI, BSI, DRII, and also through FEMA and B PECB. So these are the certification bodies that ICOR credits in the business continuity and continuity op operations discipline. Under the crisis management and communications, ICOR has an online course that it's called Crisis Management and Communications. Um, there is a certification exam that goes along with that course, or you can challenge the exam independently. The other certification body within this discipline comes from the Public Relations Society of America, and their acronym is PRSA, and they have a certification that we also accredit. In the Critical Environments, um, discipline. We actually have five ways that you can earn certification within this discipline. We have a series of courses as well as certification exams. We have the technician associate, the technician, the manager, the engineer, and the auditor. And because critical environments is such a large field, there are many other certification bodies that we, that we accredit and count certification. So CNET has a series of certifications, data center dynamics, EPI, and the International Facility Management Association, IFMA. With financial health, health and viability, there are no certification bodies and there is no um, professional certification in this area. So i recognizes all academic and degree programs in the areas of business, finance, and others. So this is where if you work in the business world as a business person, you can um, demonstrate that you manage the financial um, health and viability of your organization. So you're going to be asked to provide evidence of academic credit as well as give a description of what your job um, entails. So do you work with business operations and logistics? Do you work within finance? Do you work on the organizational metric side? Are you part of the measurement team? Do you, are you in sales and marketing or do you work on the economic side of your organization? And that would include things like accounting. Human resource management is also an interesting area. While we do have some workshops that support um, this discipline, we do not have a formal certification or exam. So i recognizes all academic and degree programs in the area of human resource management, as well as the Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM, has their own certification, as well as the Association of Talent Development, ATD. With the Information and Communication Technology um, Continuity Discipline, the, um, we have a Critical Environment Technology Professional course and certification. This is both instructor-led and e-learning, and you can challenge the exam without taking the course. Uh, BRCCI is a certification body that we recognize in this area, as well ITIL certification, and the Institute for Certification of Computing Professionals has a series of certifications that we would also accredit or um, recognize in this discipline. Incident response is the discipline that we changed. Um, remember I mentioned earlier we had one under emergency response and it combined some of the incident response pieces. Also some of the incident response pieces were under business continuity. And, and under facility management. So we have combined those. And we're looking for people that have competence in physical security, security management, emergency management, environmental health and safety, life safety and health safety. There are some certification bodies in this area. 
Um, ASIS is a certification body for physical security people. IAEM is the Association of Emergency Managers. ISHM has to do with um, environmental health and safety. The U.S. Department of Labor has, and on, all of these, by the way, are listed on our website, and you can hyperlink right to the actual certifications and how you can earn those. The U.S. Department of Labor has several under environmental health and safety. FEMA has certifications under emergency management. And the Emergency Management Institute also has education courses that lead to certification. With information security, i is working on a course called the ISO 27001 Lead Implementer that's coming in 2018. And that course will have a certification exam that will count for the information security discipline. The other certification bodies that you've probably heard of is ISC squared. Um, International Information S System Security Certification Consortium. I, I always laugh. I think their name is actually harder to say than ICOR's name. They have the CISSP certification. And then ISACA has the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, and they have three or four certifications under information security as well. Legal audit and compliance is a tricky one. So I know that there was no one here today um, that works within those disciplines. We ICOR will have a um, management system auditor course coming up, which is just essentially how to audit to any management system. We currently have how to audit to a business continuity management system, and we will also be working on how to audit to an information security management system under 27001. But we will have just a generic um, standalone how to do a management system audit. The other certification bodies, um, it would be from the Institute of Internal Auditors. And there are a ton of certification bodies that teach how to audit to management systems. And really the most popular two would be the ISO 9000 auditors as well as the Environmental Health and Safety, which is ISO 14001 auditors. So with, it, with every management system, um, auditors have to be accredited. They have to hold um, a, a credential. And so anyone that holds a credential to audit to any management system could earn credit under the legal audit and compliance. Obviously, if you're a lawyer, um, if you're an auditor, if you, um, you know, work in the legal and regulatory departments, those requirements would also fulfill this discipline. Organizational behavior is probably our most difficult one. We have had a ton of people recommend certifications that would fit under here. The most common one would be the quality. And I, I really believe the quality one sits under um, quality management. We've been sort of, the certification board with i has been pretty much split 50-50. So at this time, we haven't put quality under organizational behavior. Um, but we might. We'll see. But we're looking at things like project management skills, leadership qualities, so whether you have attended workshops um, for leadership types of things, or again, looking at managing risk throughout the organization, um, how can you demonstrate competence in making your organization culture more healthy, and managing communications within your organization. This is a little bit different from just crisis management communications. We're talking communications in general. And then um, the Project Management Institute is a certification body for project management. And the Association for Talent Development, we've noted them under HR, um, also does quite a bit of work under organizational behavior. We're talking general risk management here. We're looking for people who have competence is, competencies in risk management, including how to do a risk assessment, how to, do, how to implement risk treatments, or we might want to call them business continuity strategies, depending on where you're fitting with that, how to do risk communications, and anybody that works with insurance. There are several certification bodies with this. We've got RIMS, the Risk and Insurance Management Society, the institutes that have called the Risk and Insurance Group, and then the Institute for Risk Management, IRM, is also an important um, resource, and they have some certifications as well. And finally, under supply chain management, we're looking for competence in product or production and inventory management, logistics, transportation, and distribution, 
um, looking at supply chain risk, supply chain continuity, supply chain security. ICOR has um, workshops within this discipline that you can earn CEUs for, but we do not have a formal certification within that discipline. We will refer to APIX, and their name was way too long, so I just kept it as APICS. Also, the Council for Supply Chain Management Professionals, the Institute for Supply Management, and the Supply Chain Education Alliance. Also included in here to get experience with this, we've had several people who worked um, in the military, and they were part of logistics in the military. So remember, if you've had that kind of experience as well, that would count or we would give you credit for that. Um, that would not necessarily be a formal certification, but you could show that you have um, met those competency areas through your work experience. So I wanted to go through each one of those individual disciplines so that you had a really clear understanding of what those entailed. And so the, what I want to show you um, before I go on to the next slide is just show you a couple pages of the ICOR website. So on the ICOR website, when you go to um, the credentialing page, essentially you can go under education and credentialing and you click on credentialing and it'll bring you to this page and it t gives you the requirements for um, the same thing that I just talked about here. We also have our certification by discipline, which I also spoke about, and then our, our certificate program. When you're then looking at, okay, how do I do um, certification renewal? You know what, let me go to um, the OR certification first. And this is where you can go ahead and look at all of the ones, all of the organizations that I just was talking about. So these will then click hyperlink right to that organization, and then you can see um, what their certifications are, and and how to go about earning those. So this is really the page where I was telling you about each one of the organizations that we would count towards credit for a discipline, or you can meet those requirements and you can hyperlink directly on those from our OR certification page. So my next question, and it's going to lead to a poll, is, you know, well, how do you want to grow professionally? Do you want to grow within individual disciplines? So if you, let's say, you know, we, we said there's quite a bit of people with business continuity experience today, others with the critical environments and the ICT continuity. If this is where you are, if you're strong on the, on the data center side, for example, do you want to strengthen in the information and communication technology side? You can literally use our website to help you to understand where to go for certification. So we are actually promoting certifications by other organizations while we support our own program. So do you want to grow within disciplines or do you want to grow across disciplines? So let's say, you know what, I've been in I've been working in the communications field my whole life, but I want to be earn a certification, so I'm going to go and earn i certification in crisis management communications. And I also assist with incident response, so I'm going to now strengthen myself there as well. So look at strengthening yourself within a discipline. So maybe you've got experience, but you haven't actually sought a certification. My recommendation would be to look at the competency areas that the exam um, is it, is testing you on and to say, you know what, I think I have it or maybe, you know, maybe I want to take a class and support myself on that before I take the exam. But there's many ways to strengthen yourself within individual disciplines. And then I also recommend that you strengthen yourself across disciplines. We really need to get rid of those silos. When we are thinking in silos, we are not working for the best part of the organization. And there's so much research about um, siloed thinking, way, even way outside of risk management and, and organizational resilience. It's the siloed thinking throughout the organization really hurts an organization. And so if you want to grow to be senior or top manager for your organization and build on the skill sets and competencies that you have, you want to be able to um, grow professionally across those disciplines. And so this is where I challenge you to identify which disciplines do I already have some knowledge in, I have some experience in through my job that I want to become stronger in, and how can I do that? And look at ICOR's website, and, and you know, whether you use ICOR or whether you use another organization to do that, then my recommendation would be to come back 
and look at how you can do that and how you can get a certification that recognizes that. So my next poll is what is your strategy for professional development? So go ahead and, and, and choose which one do you think most meets your needs. Are you trying to strengthen competence across individual or are you trying to strengthen competence across multiple disciplines? And there is no right or wrong answer for this, by the way. It's really to get you thinking about how you can um, grow professionally. Give it a couple more seconds. All right, let me share the results. It is really exciting to see that 86% of you um, are looking at strengthening your competence across multiple disciplines. I mean, obviously, as the president of ICOR, and this is what we believe in, that this is the way of the future. And, you know, I grew up in an era where we were supposed to become specialists. So when I went to college, everybody wanted you to learn one thing and be the expert on that one thing. More recently, you know, our, our children have been encouraged to learn as much as they can about as many things as they can. And so this is something that I think no matter what your age, when you're looking to grow professionally, being strong in more than one area can also really help you. I know I've heard story after story of people in 2008 that lost their jobs and because they knew how to do one thing. But people who were able to do many things, maybe one part of their job went away, but they were able to keep their job because they knew something else. So no matter what it is that you do, growing professionally across multiple disciplines um, can only help you. So let me talk about applying for certification. The certification process is not that difficult and we've also made it um, very competitive with other certification bodies as far as cost. So the first thing you'll want to look at is, you know, which disciplines do, you, do I think I meet those requirements? And then secondly, um, how can I gather the information I need in order to support that? So if you already are certified by another organization, and I'll use business continuity as an example, Let's say you have a business continuity certification from BCI or DRI. You, you, all you would have to do to, to demonstrate your competence for i court then that is to provide your certification number and its expiration date. So it just needs to be valid. And you'd be done with that discipline. If you haven't done that, then when you're applying for certification, you would either need to pass our certification exam or we have a form that you can fill out to demonstrate some of those competencies, competencies and I'll show you that in a minute. You also need to um, show your CEUs, so be able to um, upload evidence that you have, whether you have attendance certificates or you can say that you've been to a different, you know, to a conference or event. And then literally for the manager level, you know, if you've done a workshop at, at your company, just post the workshop or you can have somebody um, write a letter for you from management that's saying that you run workshops for your organization if they don't want you to share what that workshop was. Just like every other certification, um, certification is good for three years. So you do not have to pay i a fee every year. You pay the fee every three years. So when you look at um, your budget. I believe that anytime you seek certification, you should look at the renewal process first. And I, you know, why should you buy into something and invest in something that you don't want to continue doing over time? So understanding that it's good for every three years, you only pay once every three years when you do the renewal. There are eight competency areas per discipline when you're looking at the I-Course certifications, and I'll show you those in a second. And you have to have um, continuing education credits over those over those three years. So let me show you what a certification um, renewal process looks like. 
So for the CRS, and I'm just showing you an Excel spreadsheet because it's easier than logging in and jumping around to our certification tool. Essentially, this will give you, and let me just make it a bit bigger for you. This will be, give you um, uh, basic information. So you need to, if you're looking at the manager level, you need to meet the certification renewal requirements or the certification application requirements for each of the two certification disciplines. And you, there's points that you can earn for those. You have to have a certain number of CEUs, and you have to have a minimum of one internal speaking opportunity in one or more disciplines during the past three years, and or being a blogger, you know, participating in LinkedIn or those sorts of things. And you can certainly have links for that. So let me show you under the business continuity what I mean by competency areas. So here is where um, we show you essentially the same information on each of the certifications. That in order to do this, you have to have a minimum number of points for each of the areas. You can also fulfill by taking an exam. Alternatively, you can be in good standing from the organizations that are listed here. And then we also share with you um, exactly what the certifications are, just like if you'd link to those websites. So I'm going to hide that just for a minute. What we've done is identify competency areas for each of our certification disciplines. So under business continuity, leadership and governance is one of those competency areas. There's four subsets for that. Understanding the BCMS purpose and value, understanding demonstrations of leadership commitment, understanding the roles, responsibilities, and authorities, and understanding the policy. So we've identified some sample activities for you. That you had a role in aligning an organization's BCMS to the requirements of ISO 22301 that you had a role in getting management to support the BCMS as demonstrated in, in the guidance document. So instead of us listing everything, we're actually referring to something else. That your job and or consulting responsibilities include responsibility for the organization's business continuity management system. And that your responsibilities um, include creating, reviewing, and or maintaining a policy for at least one organization. So you have to have 30 points in each of these competency areas. But you can do that by doing any one of these things. So you could get 10 points for, for this requirement, 10 for here and 10 for here, or you can get all 30 points in one of these. We also give you some example of proofs. So in, what we suggest here is provide document, any documentation that provides evidence of an understanding of those requirements. Um, you get two points for each example of how top management supports your organization's BCMS and your role in the process. This can include evidence of your role as part of your job description or consultant contract to interact with those in top management who own the program. And then, you know, again, roles and responsibilities. Examples include the role of the management, role of incident response, all of those different pieces. And then examples include your role in creating, reviewing, and maintaining at least one BCMS policy. What some people have done to meet these different competency areas is to just create one document where they then describe what they do and they refer back to these things. So instead of saying, you know, over and over again um, what those are, you can just create one document, describe how you meet the requirements. So this would be under planning and program management, under understanding how to do a business impact analysis, understanding how to do a risk assessment. By the way, you get points for speaking or teaching on any of these areas, as well as if you author a white paper, um, write an article or run a workshop or a course. So you can automatically get 15 points, well, you know, if you spoke at DRJ or Continuity Insights or something like that if you're in the U.S. Um, the other next fifth competency is determining and documenting your strategy. Sixth competency is implementing your procedures. So we have incident response structure, communication procedures, and business continuity and recovery procedures. Understanding how to check those procedures, so making sure that you understand how to do awareness, measure competency requirements run an exercise program, and then the last competence one under, under business continuity is doing your performance evaluation. So how do you evaluate your procedures? Do you do an internal audit and self-assessment and participating in a management review? So these are what we, we have similar things as you can see for each one of our disciplines. They have different competency areas based on the requirements for that certification. The other requirement as I mentioned has to do with um, continuing education. So just include any workshops, webinars, formal education, conferences. Any conference listed on the ICOR conference page is already pre-approved. 
So every hour that you attend equals one point. So if you need, you know, if you, the total points would be um, 40 points for the business continuity over three years, then um, essentially you could, could include any of those things that you do. And then so you can get what, the, what we're trying to here say is on your point value, five hours or points total for this competency area. So we're trying to have you um, earn 40 points over three years, but not all 40 under leadership and governance, for example. So looking at how you can, because we want you to be as a business continuity professional or in, in an ISO 22301 lead implementer to have experience with, on all eight of those competency areas. So this is how it looks on a simple Excel spreadsheet, and the tool looks very similar to this where you can upload um, some of the evidence for that. So in summary, um, the world is changing. Are you changing with it? You need, if you can walk away from this webinar and just talk and identify what is your professional development strategy? How can you um, learn more about those individual risk-based disciplines and how can you grow professionally in, in two or more of those disciplines which will help you um, provide you with those credentials and competencies on the road to top management. And I want you to really be clear here is there's no single approach to becoming certified in organizational resilience. It's really up to you to define what path is best for you and what it is that you need in order to grow professionally. You know, where are you now? Where do you want to go? Just like there's no single path to helping an organization to become more resilient, it depends what the organization does, what its goals are, what its strategies are, and then choosing a path that works for them. The same thing is, is really right for you. So when one of the things that people do oftentimes is they send me their resume or we get a resume sent to our certification email and we'll say, which certification should I apply for? And that that is something that um, sure we'll be happy to help you with, but you should have a really good idea of what it is that you want to do and how you want to grow professionally. Um, you know, as an outside person, we can evaluate your resume, but it's really up to you to determine what your path is and where you want to go. I think I'll answer, we had a couple of questions, um, mostly having to do with the business continuity audits. I'll answer that question offline because it's pretty specific. If you have any other questions that you'd like me to answer, I can take a look at those before we close today. I also want to invite you to um, sign up for any of our, uh, the rest of our 2017 webinar series. We're really excited this year to launch these webinars. It's the first time we've, been, we've done it. And we hope that next year we can actually run one every two weeks. Um, this year we are hosting all of them ourselves and we would um, invite you if you're interested in hosting a webinar with i that you could contact us to do that. So on June 21st, um, we'll be talking about implementing ISO 22301, looking at the business continuity discipline specifically. In July on the 26th, we're going to be looking at the crisis management and communication discipline and looking at communication strategies. In August, we're looking at managing risks to the critical environment. In September, we're going to talk about leadership and leadership aspects for resilient organizations. In October, we're going to be looking more at information and communication technology and how to preserve, protect, and recover data. In November, it'll be on information security, about understanding and protecting against security breaches. And in December, we're going to close up the year with building a more resilient supply chain. Just a reminder that our webinars are offered live as you as you're here and they are also offered at, on demand so what a lot of times will people will ask us you know we weren't able to get on we signed up but we couldn't get on um, can we still see it yes the webinars are on our webinar page so that you can um, view them later if you want to watch it again it'll be available and then if you are a member of ICOR the webinars will be stored in the ICOR Resilience Research Center so that you can view them anytime after that as well So I had a, there is a question that says, are there time limits to qualify activities? Like um, a gentleman said he taught a class five years ago. 
So when you're applying for certification, it needs to be within the last three years. The same thing when you renew your certification, it'll be what have you done since you were certified up until when you're recertifying. So we're looking at um, any of your experiences in the last three years. And that is pretty standard. What ICOR has done is because of our involvement in, in the International Standards Organization, we are following the requirements that ISO has put out for um, what certification bodies are supposed to do, what should certification programs look like. It is our goal and intention, we already have the ANSI accreditation for our certificate programs as a lead auditor for BCMS and our crisis communication planner. It is our long range plan and strategy to be able to get our um, certification or our COR, COR series um, accredited by ISO and ANSI, and, and ANSI would be the accreditation body in the U.S., as well as our individual discipline specific certifications accredited as well. Um, this is a huge deal. It's a, it's a huge um, opportunity, I think, and it's a differentiator. Certifications like the CISSP are accredited, the PMP are accredited. Right now in the business continuity and the IT, I'll call it the ITDR space and the critical environment space, there are no certification bodies that are accredited. I think this is lacking. And in order for a certification to be accredited, you have to demonstrate that it is tied to a job analysis. And that is what we have done for each of our discipline-specific certifications. And that is then tied to um, the overall organizational resilience certifications. And that job analysis is huge because then it goes to an employer and it says, all right, this person actually has these requirements based on a job analysis. And that is where we're striving and that is our long-term strategy. It will take some time to do that. It's a huge um, time investment as well as financial investment, but we believe it's important to do that. So we have built our certification program around those requirements so that when we when we seek accreditation, we're not going to get a nonconformity and say, well, you're, expect, you're accepting evidence of experience that's dated when, when the standard is that it should be within the last three years. And so that's why we're, that's how we made up some of those rules was to meet those requirements. All right, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. And um, if you have any questions, you can email certification at the icor.org. And of course, visit our website our new URL, buildresilience.org, and you can look under certification to get some of your questions answered there as well. If you have, again, if you have follow-up questions, um, feel free to contact us, and we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much.